Thank you. We're now going to go to Deputy Opitz. Yeah, sure. um, in terms of multiculturalism, I would also point out that Senator Paul Yusick and uh, Prime Minister Diefenbaker had a great deal to do with it. Uh, at the time, but um, and this was a great discourse, but I think we need to re vector on on what the real discussion is here today, and it's security, uh, Canadian security in, in, in our uh, in our immigration system. And I'd like to talk to you about, um, you know, we have talked about uh, earlier on incidents where where somebody has arrived in this country multiple times, deported multiple times, come back, perform criminal acts, and so forth, uh, and that's a hole in our security, clearly, um, and some of the biometric. Um, data that we'd like to put in place, including uh, information sharing with our allies that will assist us in being able to, uh, to identify those people that, that are undesirable in Canada or are actually coming here um, potentially for, to do harm to this country or for under fraudulent means. So I, I would like, uh, and there are biometrics now. I mean, here's, uh, here's my Nexus card. This is, uh, I love this thing because uh, you, you get in and out of the airport uh, very, very quickly. You're identified. It's there. Uh, the, uh, the retina scan, fingerprint scan, my, my photograph, which is really unflattering, but, uh, but it's very useful. So I would like your thoughts on, on the, the security apparatus, the things that we need to put in place, as Mr. Menegakis uh, earlier uh, referred to as uh, an entrance and en exit strategy so we know people coming in and out of uh, Canada. So can you comment on those things, sir? My, my comment is very briefly. We need, we need the technological input that we can get and put them in place. The, the dilemma is, as, as the previous witness has pointed out, the question about our legal obligation, our constitutional obligation to, to, to the individuals on the one side of the equation, and the other side of the equation is exactly as you have mentioned, the concern about our security, people who want to do us harm. That's quite evident. And how do we go about it? How do we balance those things? I would weigh in on the security side, given the nature of the world that we are living in and the nature of the threats that exist. Yeah, I agreed, and I, I think that we need to uh, um, be able to identify people categorically um, through through photographs, you know, the, the tombstone data, as they say, which is very, very useful. Um, and in terms of information sharing, what is your view on terms of the uh, uh, databases that are shared? Should they be a 100% solution? Or, or, uh, as Because as I don't think there is. I mean, data is, is only as... Uh, as uh, accurate as, as the inputs and, and is subject to correction no matter where you are. Um, what's your view on sharing data between uh, allies, sir? Well, it depends upon who you're sharing with. I mean, I think if you're going to be sharing with other democracies, you know, we, we need to share with other democracies. Uh, and, 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 and we will trust that and demand that they keep those data secure. But if you're sharing it with non-democracies and much of the threats that we are talking about, which is below the surface, we don't want to, you know, put them in words, are from areas which are non-democratic societies, you know, and the problem will persist. How do we share those data with these non-democratic societies, knowing fully well that these are societies that have no respect for their own people? We're watching this on a daily basis, what is happening. So those are concerned. We as a democracy, we take our responsibility seriously. And we can only go for so far as about our responsibility is, but the other side, you know, it will be simply a matter of prudence and pragmatics. Okay. Uh, I don't have much time left. So I'm, um, oh, do, oh, do I? 20 okay, seconds. Great. Now, would biometrics technology be enough here, or would uh, other methods? So, for example, Israel, you know, they, they use pre-screening methods to identify everybody that's boarding a plane before they depart or enter Israel uh, via, via an Israeli airline. Is there, is there something we can do? Should we implement similar well, procedures? Well, the quick answer is this is, this is the paradox, you know. We, we put in a high technology, technological instrument in place and we assume that will solve a problem. The ultimate is the human in intelligence. So the Israeli issue is also they have the, the most modern technology to the extent that I have traveled in Israel, but the human intelligence is, you know, also immensely good. And ultimately it's the human intelligence side that becomes in some ways a critical issue. Just for the more, uh, can you uh, define human intelligence? Well, the sources that we deal with, security, people that can come and talk to you, here I am, sharing with you information, you know, uh, the information that we can provide, uh, our state and its 
people can reach out and, and keep tab upon the information that comes to. I think that's, and the confidence that the people feel to come out and share the information. I don't have to tell you, sir, about, for instance, the way the Toronto 18 was cracked. And, and so many others have been cracked that we do not know about it because, again, the dog never bowed never barked. Mm -hmm. But the reason that the dog never barked because it was the human intelligence that prevented from the dog from barking. Right. Oh. Thank you. Uh, 